This is me covering all my bases, making sure that if something happens to me or my family or all of us. And the phone rang, and the voice on the other end said, when was the last time you saw Susan? And I instantly kind of felt like dread. What has happened? 28-year-old Susan Powell was last seen Sunday. It has been three days. Four days and counting. Been missing for a week. Josh had taken the children on a middle-of-the-night camping trip. It was freezing cold. None of this makes any sense. He was like, yeah, the kids are here. No, Susan's not with me. And I was like, well, where is she? You know, and he was like, I don't know. Who were you camping with? Uh, my dad and my mom. The children said mommy was in the van but didn't come back with us. Pretty significant thing for a, a four-year-old to, to tell a detective. Susan had often referred to her father-in-law as creepy. Uh, We're too close. <laughs> there was Stephen wanting to be interviewed, and he ends up revealing the biggest bombshell. We interacted in a, a lot of sexual ways because I enjoy doing that. She even goes as far as to say, if I die, it may not be an accident. Okay, go and ask one last question. How am I going to find your wife without your help? Puyallup is a smaller town. It's located in an area that's kind of protected from wind and rain from the, the mountains around it. It's a suburb of Seattle and Tacoma. It's homey, it's growing, low crime. Lots of children who live there, lots of families. How many people are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? A lot of really nice people interconnected through the church. It's kind of a very typical American community. It is in Puyallup, Washington, where these two families and these two lives intersect. Josh Powell and Susan Cox. Susan was one of four daughters born to Chuck and Judy Cox. She was just, you know, a really typical girl and teenager. She liked to ride horses. She's my partner in crime. Susan tried to be rebellious, but she had too good of a heart. She was doing well in church and school, had friends, she loved choir. She liked her hair done, her nails done, wear stylish clothes. Susan had gone to cosmetology school. She liked to make other people feel good about themselves. She got interested in boys as a teenager. She met Josh when she was 18 at a social event for young Mormons, and he was in his 20s. And she hadn't dated a lot. In the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, if you are unmarried, you can attend a congregation that is for other unmarried individuals. And so Josh and Susan are both kind of circulating in this singles crowd. There are these incredible home movies taken by Josh's dad, which were later released by police, that show the couple's blossoming relationship. You cut that out of the tape, right? <laughs> when I first met Josh, I guess I thought he was cute. He was very confident, and he thought he could get any girl he wanted. Susan said that he was treating her really well, and he cared about her, and he promised he'd make her happy. Josh Powell was a ambitious, strong-headed, kind of nerdy guy. Just tall, dorky, his head's too big for his shoulders. He just looked awkward. He's got a job, he's got his own place, and he's going to college, sounding pretty good. He's going to go to school for business, so he's somebody who is bright when he applies himself. They quickly fell in love. You see pictures of them, they looked to be completely smitten. 
Josh and Susan's relationship goes from not knowing each other at all in October to being engaged by the end of December. When she told me she was getting married, I wasn't that supportive because she barely knew him. And she just assured me that she's going to be really happy and that he wanted in life what she wanted in life. Those videos also capture Josh and Susan's wedding and the home life they built together after. Susan looked very pretty at her wedding, very traditional, long white dress. Yeah. <laughs> so you put the ring in that box and all have it. Opened it up, put it on. She was very excited to show off Josh and start their lives together. Let's see the ring. Let's see that ring. Hold your hand up, please. There's a couple. It's a young person's love story that quickly becomes dark. As the reception went on, Josh was ignoring her more and more, taking pictures and hanging out with his family, and then disappearing. I could tell she's getting more agitated. Susan and Josh didn't have much money, and they found themselves in doing some odd jobs just to get by. Susan actually was the financial provider. He kept going in and out of jobs and was never really settled with anything. They moved to West Valley City in Utah because they were looking for a better life. They wanted to improve their economic situation. They buy a house and they start to have a family. I still remember the day that she told me she was pregnant. It was probably the most impactful day of her life. She was so excited because she always wanted to be a mom. I would describe Josh as an unattached dad. Josh wanted to hold Charlie when he wanted to show him off to people, but other than that, he didn't want to change his diaper or feed him or give him a bath. Hey, buddy. Go up here. Here we go. Okay. And then they had Brayden. And if you look at the family pictures, there is joy and there is sparkle. <laughs> uh, yeah. As little boys, they were rambunctious and mischievous and ran around being typical, happy little boys. Oh. What are you watching? Ah! Cars and Susan loved them more than anything in the world. Monday morning, December 7th, 2009, they didn't show up. Debbie Caldwell, she is the daycare provider for Charlie and Braden Powell. And by seven o'clock, Still no Susan, she had to be to work at seven. So that's not like Susan to be late and not call. They don't show up that Monday morning as the snowstorm is coming in and Debbie Caldwell becomes concerned. Debbie tried to call Susan on the phone, tried to call Josh, couldn't reach anybody. So I got in the van and I went up the street to her house. And as I pulled into her circle, there was no tire tracks in the driveway. So I pounded on the door and I got no answer. So Debbie calls the emergency contact, which is Josh's sister, Jennifer Graves, and uh, Josh's mom, Terry Powell. The conclusion that we came to was carbon monoxide. They're probably dead in their beds. We ended up calling the police. 911, what is your emergency? My son and his wife and their two children are not responding to calls, so they're not responding to people pounding on their door, and there's no trucks coming out of their driveway. I'm worried that maybe gas has been left on or something like that. And a couple of officers come out on a, a welfare check. They determine that the best course of action is to break a window to see whether or not the family is in there. And they said, we'll go in if you'll pay for the window. And so we said, yeah. Absolutely. They find evidence that pointed to some unusual circumstances. 
Why would that be here? That just wasn't a normal thing. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.